Welcome to worship with us today. We're coming to you from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. We're glad we could be together this way and we hope that the time you spend with us is a blessing to you. confessing our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and one God, whose voice is upon the water, whose mercy is poured upon all the people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know us. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the spirit reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. you can join us so again glad. today yes so good to see you and yes. you and you and you so all of you to see all of you um so today we're talking again about the disciples yes um yes disciples. and we're talking about in our story today we hear about and we're going to be talking about how jesus called on um his disciples today so i'm going to be reading to you the story out of the spark story bible um a so story you've probably heard many times let's hope so it's a great one yes and ashley is going to help us tell the story i'm gonna try yeah we'll see how i do she's gonna do it so our our story is called the disciples the disciples (laughs) and it goes like this jesus told everyone he met repent repent stop doing bad things stop and start doing good things start one day jesus was at the seashore And a crowd gathered to listen to hear what he had to say. Jesus hopped onto a fishing boat so more people could see and hear him. Thank you for letting me use your boat, Jesus said. Thanks, guys. Then he said to the fisher brothers, Simon and Andrew, I want to thank you with lots of fish. Lots of fish. Throw out your nets. Throw out those nets, boys. We'll try, they sighed. Simon and Andrew put their nets into the water. But we fished all night and caught absolutely nothing, they explained to Jesus. Suddenly, they felt their nets tug. They were overflowing with fish. The nets were so full that they broke. The brothers pulled in so many fish that the boat started to sink. Help, they called for their friends in another boat. We have so many fish. James and John rushed to their rescue. They waited. Keep going, keep going. We they got waited it. for the fish. All, and then almost the weight of the fish almost took down. <laughs> took down the whole the thing. The whole thing. Oh, no. Onto the water. Oh, no. They knew. <laughs> we got this. Keep going. They, they knew, knew that their new friend, Jesus, must be someone very special. Very special. As he was the one who told them they would catch fish. Hey, Simon and Andrew. Hey, Pete, James and John. Follow me, Jesus called to all of them. Let's catch people instead of fish. The two sets of brothers dropped their nets into the sea. They were not fishing for fish anymore. They were disciples. Now they were followers of Jesus. Jesus met seven others that same day. Philip, Bartholomew. Thomas, another James, Thaddeus, another Simon, and Judas. Follow me, Jesus said to each of them. They all stopped everything they were doing, and they followed Jesus. Now they were all disciples. Now they would all follow Jesus. No matter where he went, Jesus called for men and women, boys and girls, to drop what they were doing and to follow him. Ooh, that was an exciting story. Woo! You made it very exciting. Thank you so much. So I have to ask you this question. How do you follow Jesus? I go fishing. I fish <laughs> for people. Fish for <laughs> people. Come how, and how do you fish for people though? I don't know. What do you think? I think um, simply being kind to others, mm-hmm. um, helping during worship, mm-hmm. readers, even if it's on video when mm-hmm. they read um, for worship, um, helping with the ushers, mm-hmm. being kind being to others, kind to others, holding doors, following for his God's word yes. through their actions and hopes and dreams. Absolutely. But yes. can we really drop everything all the time? I mean, some of these kids got homework assignments, they got games to play yes. and TV to watch, although not too much, hopefully. I mean, how are they supposed to drop all that just to go and follow Jesus? I don't think we have to drop everything. Mm. I think we can do exactly what we're doing in our world Mm -hmm. and still follow Jesus. Still make that a priority. Still make that a priority. By the good that we do. Yes. And by having our relationship with 
Jesus. Jesus. Yes. How that, do you have a relationship with Jesus really quick? Uh, pray. Praying. That's yes. how I do it. Absolutely. Pray yes. and share his word and read. Read the Bible. Read, the read Bible. his word and tell Very his story. Yes. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Nicole. That was amazing. It's very fun to tell yes. the story, and we're so glad you could join us today. Nicole, we're would thrilled. you close us in prayer? I would love to close That's us in so prayer. That's so great. Clasp your hands, bow your heads, and you can repeat after me. Good and loving God. Good and loving God. Thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for bringing us together today. Help us all to remember. Help us to remember. How to be followers of Jesus. How to be followers of Jesus. Help us to be kind. Help us to be kind. And help us to love all of those around us. And help us to love all of those around us. And all God's children say. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. The first greeting is Jonah 3 verses 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degrees are but a fleeting breath and those of low estates cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. For God has spoken once. Twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. For you repay all according to their deeds. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 7, verses 29 through 31. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel is a reading from the Gospel of Mark. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. 
and immediately they left their nets and followed him. As they went a little further, he saw James, son of Jebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Whenever I hear this, uh, this lesson here, I'm reminded of this uh, poem that I like. It was by um, William Stafford, and it's called St. Matthew and All. And it goes like this. Lorraine, we thought she'd come home, but it got late, and then days. Now it has been years. Why wouldn't she? If she wanted, I would. Something comes along. A sunny day, you start walking. You meet a person who says, follow me, and things lead on. Usually it wouldn't happen, but sometimes the neighbors notice your car is gone, the patch of oil in the driveway, and it fades. They forget. In the Bible it happened. Fishermen, Levites, they just went away and kept going. Thomas went off to India and never came back. But Lorraine, it was a stranger maybe, and he said, your life, I need it, and nobody else did. I love that it gets us to think about the power of a very simple and unexpected invitation and the transformation and the new possibilities that happen when we sometimes um, respond to that. It got me thinking, how often in our lives are we offered simple choices that have lasting impact in our life? When do we get the simplest of invitations or questions or options? And if we respond positively to it, it just transforms everything. Well, as I got thinking about it, I thought in life in general and in my life, that has often been the case. Not often, but when it happens, it's been very profound. You know, could there be a more simple but life-changing question than, will you marry me? Your whole destiny rides on what your answer to that question is. I've told the story before that when we were trying to start the feeding ministry, the wonderful feeding ministry, the banquet, um, we had no idea exactly who was going to do that or how it was, and a woman came in who just wanted to cook, and out of the blue, I think led by the Spirit of God, I asked her a very simple question. I asked her, would you like to start this ministry? And she said, yes. And it opened up all this possibility to her and to the whole community here. Years ago, um, I got tangled up in church politics, they can be ugly. And I was feeling beat up and I was feeling sorry for myself. And unfortunately, I was behaving rather poorly. And I remember one day, the wise president of the congregation came into my office and he said, Steve, there's important ministry to be done at this church right now. And he says, if you would like to do that ministry, now would be a good time. A very simple option, a very simple choice given to me, and yet it opened up the future. He, in that simple uh, observation to me, made clear that I could move out of pity into opportunity, into doing good work, and what a gift that was to me. I've always uh, thought that one of the keys to being a, a leader in anything is to be able to show people a better option. When I can show them the high road, they just might take it. Not always, sometimes things are too crazy, but more often than not, if you can show people a better way, they just might follow. I believe in this, uh, these lessons that we heard today, God is always trying to offer us a better option, a better way. Both the story of Jonah and in Jesus he talked about repentance. Now repentance, uh, it's gotten such a bad <laughs> connotation to it. It's like we should be beating ourselves and we should be feeling shame and guilt and 
all this and that. I, over the years, have come to believe that repentance is not primarily about guilt and shame. Sometimes we need to feel guilt and shame. But more often or not, it is simply this ability to see a different and better option and to take that instead of the way that keeps us locked in our shame and our bad behavior. Repentance is picking the better option, opening ourselves to different possibilities. As I always uh, say, negativity, uh, fear, guilt, can be powerful motivators in our lives. But if you think about it, they never motivate us to do anything positive. They never motivate us to do anything really positive in our lives. It is only the drawing of love, the invitation to a different and better future that really allows us to let go of the past and move forward in a positive way. I love uh, the, the story of Job, the whole book, but uh, this story, the, the little bit that we saw today, even this presents repentance in this wonderful way. Uh, the, the, not the book of Job, the book of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God, and God wanted him to go and uh, uh, preach repentance to the Ninevites, who were, uh, their reputation was for sin city itself. And uh, Jonah didn't want to go, and he tried to run the opposite direction. Well, of course, God stopped him and made a whale drag him back to Nineveh and say, you got to start here, you got to you got to do the job that I gave you to do. And the job, as I said, was to, to give to Nineveh a better option, to repent from their ways that were leading to things that hurt themselves and everyone else, and to a way that would lead to life for themselves and for others. Well, Jonah did not want to do this, and we find out later why. Because he believed God was a God of compassion and love and forgiveness, who just might forgive these people who might, might just open a different future for them. And Jonah didn't want to have them to have that opportunity. He wanted them to be punished. So as a stubborn kid who was finally forced to comply with their parents' wishes, he goes into Nineveh. Just an interesting little detail. It said Nineveh was a great city. It would take three days to walk all the way across it. It says Jonah only walked one day's journey into, into it. He only went a third of the way into this great city. He did not go into the center where the, the powerful people were, the ruler of it was. No. He was out just in the outskirts there. And he preached what I like to say is the worst sermon in human history. He says, only 40 days and Nineveh is gone. If I preached that kind of a sermon, I'd be run out of here, wouldn't I? My message was to you today was, 40 more days, good shepherd is done. God is through with you, how would you react? But the amazing thing, even with that horrible, grudging, condemning sermon, the people, as it's said in there, the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, which was a sign of repentance, of turning around, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. I love it, it wasn't in the reading here, but uh, it comes right after this, you know, even though, Jonah preached at the outskirts of town. The news got into the center of town, to the king there. And the king, when he heard this, he believed it. And he said, yes, we must repent. And he ordered all the people to wear sackcloth as a sign of that. He said, we've got to be extra sure we even have to put sackcloth on the cattle here. Just to make sure that God knows that we're serious about this. And why did he say that they did this? Because he says in, in the end, he says, who knows, God may relent and with compassion turned from his anger. This guy realized that he was being offered not judgment and condemnation, but compassion and opportunity. As everyone notes, we're living in very challenging times, and how do we, how do we live through that? How do we move forward through this in a way that brings life to ourselves and to others around us. This uh, last week I came across uh, these wonderful words of wisdom from a, a, a great Christian author, Ron Rollhauser. He says this, perhaps a helpful way to probe for a Christian response to all of this is to pose the question this way. 
What does it mean to love at a time like this? What does it mean to love in a time when people can no longer agree on what is true? How do we remain civil and respectful when it feels impossible to respect those who disagree with us? In struggling for clarity with an issue so complex, sometimes it can be good to proceed by via negativa. That's a Latin phrase that means by what should we avoid doing? And so he asked the question, what should we not do today? Well, that answer will be different for each of us. But one thing we should not do today is ignore God's call to life, to a future, to possibility, when he says to each of us, follow me. Amen. Confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of the creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. 
Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofits and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God may inspire all people in the just use of wealth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast, and for all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they may point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'd like to welcome you uh, back to worship. Um, as you know, we are starting live in house worship, and that is a joy. So uh, check uh, our website or the, the internet for uh, all the, uh, uh, when the services are. We'd like to uh, lift up uh, our annual meeting, which is coming up, where we do the important business of the church. That is going to be live, in person. That's going to be January 31st. Uh, at 1 p.m. here in the church. We do need a, a quorum of 75 members in order to transact bin, business for that. So we are kind of um, asking if you could give us an idea that you might he be here. There's an RSVP uh, that was sent out uh, on the email notification of this, or you could just call the church office. Receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace, amen. It is indeed right and our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. bitterness you did not abandon us but guided us into the path of love and life in every age you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity the cry of the poor has become your own cry our hunger and thirst for justice is your desire 
In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to bring good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Join our prayers with your prophets and martyrs of every age that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and the hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to take your wafer, or bread, or whatever you have, and take and eat it, knowing that this is the body of Christ given for you. Then we invite you to take wine or juice, whatever you have, and drink it now, knowing that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. At this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Now the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the God of all grace, 
bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.